Does this sound familiar to you? You just updated to Luminar Neo version 1.5 and you've got access to the new extensions, including background removal AI, but you're not sure exactly how to use it or what the possibilities are with this tool. Or perhaps you've tried it and are getting hit and miss results. Well, not to worry. In this video, I'm going to give you some basic tips to get started using Luminar Neo's background removal AI tool. You'll see how to apply this to your photography for endless creative possibilities. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. And if you want to learn all about photo editing, you're in the right place. So let's hop over to Luminar Neo and start removing some backgrounds. As I mentioned a moment ago, this comes with Luminar Neo update version 1.5. To make sure that you have that installed, just go to the Luminar Neo menu and check for updates. You'll notice that I have the current version. You can also check for updates by clicking on the logo. For Windows, you'll see it under this menu. Once you have the update installed, select your image. I'm going to start working with this one and then head into the regular edit panel. To find the background removal AI tool, you need to go into layer properties. If you've used portrait background removal, it's in a similar place. Go to the masking tab and it's right there below portrait background removal. So to get started, just click it and the program will analyze your image and try and find the subject and the background. Once you get to this point, all you need to do is click remove and then you'll see the background disappear, but we're not done yet. Notice there's a little tab at the bottom here that says refinements brush. Make sure to open that. You should see something like this. The subject or your object should be highlighted in orange and the background is blue. The part in between is what's called the transition zone. Now this is a really easy one to do because the outline of this object is really nice and clean against the blue sky. But not to worry, I'll show you a more complex one in a moment. I always recommend zooming in so that you can check the image hold down the space bar and grab the image to move it around. Now you notice that it missed this part of the balloon. So all you have to do is click on the object button. You notice that the button is orange to correspond with the mask. If I choose background, that button is blue. This is all very similar if you've used the portrait background removal. So I'm going to choose object, get a nice big brush and just paint in this area that it missed. Pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to go down here because it missed another little area here on the edge of the balloon. So I'm just going to get close to the edge. You don't have to paint it perfectly. The program will look for the edges. You notice that after I painted, it found the edge nicely for me. So all I have to do is get reasonably close and the program will do the rest of the work. You see that? But down here, there should be some transparency between the balloon and the basket. So this is where you want to use the transition brush. I'm going to make a little smaller brush and just paint over this area here. The program will reanalyze and look for parts of the image that are transition or even transparent. Let's try inside the basket. So don't forget about little details like that between the wires and even this tiny little spot here. We can zoom in even further to make sure that you get a nice clean cutout. That looks better. One thing that I do recommend is going around the outside of your entire image using the transition brush. See, there might have been a spot here that looks like it's partly transparent. So what I do is I make sure that my brush is half over the object and half over the background and I just straddle the edge of the object with the transition brush, which is great. Now you see that it took in some transparency. So I will just go back around the edge with the object tool again, and it should fill in. So you're literally just training the program as to where the edge of your object is. As I said, this one is pretty simple because the outline is nice and clean, but there's more difficult images will give it a bit more challenge. Before you close the layer properties, check the refinements first. Just by closing this little panel at the bottom, Refinements Brush, you're still able to access it. Once you go back to Properties or close that layer and go to something else, 
the mask has been applied and if you go back to it you have to run the removal again and you may have to do all the painting again so use this little panel to toggle off the mask to see the image i'll show you another trick on a more complicated image but before we do that let's save this one so now closing the layer properties i can export this image to be used on another image so I can add it into the sky of another image. When you do this, make sure to save the new image someplace you'll be able to find it. I made a folder called Cutout Objects and make sure that you save it as PNG format. This is really, really important. Only the PNG format can carry transparency. You also need to make sure to check off this box at the bottom for save transparency. Then it will knock that background out and you'll be copying just the balloon when you add it to a new image. So let's try it. I'm going to call it balloon and save. One question that I got a lot was how come the portrait background removal doesn't work on animals? Well, guess what? This one does. So if you want to be able to cut out animals from pictures or remove the background from your pet's pictures, make sure that you have this extension. The options for purchasing the extensions can be a little bit complicated. I did an overview video explaining that and going over all the extensions. You can check that out. I'll put a link in the description area below. So let's cut out the dog. Same process, go to background removal, let the program analyze the image, and voila. See what a great job it did? Now I might have to do just a few small refinements here, but take a look. If I use the masking transition here, smaller brush. So remember what I said, go around the outside, especially when you have something like this with a detailed or more complex outline like fur on the dog. Let me zoom in to 100% and show you what I mean on the tail area. As I go around the edge here, you'll see that it finds the background and the fur really nicely and it separates them. Let me get a slightly larger brush. Let's go over this side of the tail. Can you see what that's doing? It's really picking up all the fine detail of the fur. So I'm gonna go around the outside and I'll be right back. Okay, that looks pretty good. Close the refinements tab to check it. I'm pretty happy with that. This time I'm not gonna export it as a PNG just to show you another option with layers. To add a new background, just add a layer. And I've already selected a little mountain scene here. These are all stock images that I'm using to demonstrate this tutorial. I got them from unsplash.com. I made a collection for you, so if you want to be able to download the same images and follow along, I'll put a link in the description area below. Okay, once the background layer has been added, we need to increase the opacity to 100% and then just drag it to the bottom layer. Now we can see the problem is the dog is too big, so we can just resize him and put him down here playing in the grass. There's a few things that you need to watch out for when you're doing combinations of images like this, and the number one rule is to match the lighting. In this case, there's a little shadow on the grass here, so I thought if I put him right above the shadow, it'll kind of look like he's jumping off the ground, and that's his shadow. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for learning. Now you can go in and do some edits to the background image or the dog to make them match a little better. One thing I did notice with the dog is that he's kind of got a lot of green under his tummy. So if I use the color tool and just desaturate some of the greens and maybe the yellows, he'll look less colorful and more like a white dog. Remember any adjustments that I do here only applies to the dog. So if I desaturate 100%, He's black and white, but the layer underneath is still color. So just for fun, the dog is now playing in Yosemite National Park. I have one more example to show you. I'd like to be able to cut this plane out and put it on another image. So let's try the tool and see what happens. Aha, kind of as I suspected, it analyzed the image and it decided that the smoke behind the plane was a cloud and it didn't include it in the mask. But that's easily fixed if we want to include the smoke. So click remove and open the refinements brush. Remember to zoom in. The first thing I want to do is just fix some of these areas that it missed in here. So I'm just going to do that and I'll be right back. 
another little trick I want to show you is that you can't see the background image while you're painting. So if something is missing, I know for example there should be some additional lines from the wings here to attach them to the plane, but when the mask is on, you notice that I can't see that. So by holding down the backslash key, you can actually see the original image and you can paint in this mode. So I'm just going to paint with a transition brush over those little sticks and we'll see what happens. Do you see that? Now we can see those lines. There's a little bit in here of the blue sky. I'll just zoom in and go along the edge. This is why I recommend using a small brush zooming in quite far and just going around the edge because you'll notice that there's a little bit of sky all the way around a little bit of blue outline however keep in mind that wherever you're going to put this he's probably going to be flying and there's probably going to be some kind of sky behind him as well so i'm not going to get too critical and worry about it because it's going to match the new image pretty closely as well the other thing to consider here is do we need to make the cockpit transparent we can try and go through the middle here and see if we can make it partly transparent. Again, I'm not too worried about it because we're gonna be putting it on another image with sky anyways. The next part we wanna look at is the smoke behind the plane. When we look at the before image, you can see this trail of smoke. It's actually kind of cool that it cut out the smoke because it gives you a choice. For this plane, for example, I can choose to cut it out like this or we can try and add the smoke. So to add the smoke, I'm just going to zoom in to 50%. So once, make sure I have the full edge of the image over here. So I'm just scrolling over with my mouse. Click the object button, and then I'm just going to get a cursor or brush size about the same size as the smoke. Remember to use the backslash key. Okay, see that looks pretty close. Now I'm going to hold down the backslash key and I'm just going to do one pass with this object brush through the smoke. I do find that when I do it this way and hold down the backslash key, it does take a moment to think about it, so be patient with the program. Okay, let's see how well it's done. If I toggle that off, you can see there's still a little bit of sky showing. So we can zoom in and use the transition brush. When you have something that is transparent like this, I recommend going over more of it. So basically use a larger transition brush and it'll actually pull up or notice and recognize that it is a transparent object. So I'm just gonna go around the areas that have some blue and see if I can get it to blend. I'm working ahead of the program, it'll catch up. Can you see that? If I zoom in a little bit, you can actually see through the clouds there. See how well that's working? I'm at 200% now just to show you how well it does on the edges of these clouds. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to do a pretty good job here. So I'm going to finish up the edge like so. Let's check it. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We can refine it a little bit more when we add it to another image. So I'm going to export this one and call it plain. Make sure to save it as a PNG. Very important. Make sure to check off the bottom box, save transparency, very important, and save it to the place where I put the other cutout objects. Remember the mountain scene with the dog? Well, I've added a new layer and added the plane. Let's zoom in and have a look. See, again, it's not perfect and the color doesn't match quite well. So I'd have to warm up the plane a little bit just by giving it a bit of yellow to match the mountain scene a little bit better. I also find it's a little bit too crisp and bright, so I would probably blur it or use a mystify or tool or something like that. But you see how well the smoke matches and blends in with the new sky? It's blue, so it blends. I hope you're getting an idea of how you can harness the creative possibilities inside Luminar Neo using the background removal tool. This is in no way, shape or form the best composite image I could ever make, I just wanted to show you how the tool works and give you some ideas to get you started. I'll have another video for you soon with six tips for success using this tool. 
If you got a lot out of this video and you want to learn more about Luminar Neo, check out Luminar Neo The Complete Course. You get over 30 lessons and step-by-step -step instructions on how to master Luminar Neo as well as my raw files to practice with. If you want more Luminar Neo tutorials here on YouTube, click this video now. Until next time, take care. We'll see you soon.